Hey everybody, I'm Justin from Playing Board Games, and today I'm going to do a little deck tech about Roland Banks from the Arkham Horror card game, solo style. That's right. So, there are a couple rules to this series. Number one, every scenario's deck is going to be built with only the available cards in mind. So, because we're doing ga the gathering from the core set for the first video, all of these cards are only going to be from the core set. Number two, these decks, they are built with only one core set. So, these videos are for those people who buy one core set and want to see what kind of deck they can build with the content they have. Of course, there is the problem with one core set, you get a little bit less consistency, so your decks are a little bit worse, but my hope is to make it so that you have a little bit of a better time to be able to beat the challenges before you. The final rule is that uh, these videos will be a series and you will see upgrade path with the same rules in mind. So Roland Banks is kind of a machine built to kill enemies and discover clues. So he's very good at both of those things, so we're going to try to take advantage of that while shoring up his weaknesses in this deck. Uh, he has his Roland's 38 special and the cover-up. Uh, you also get one basic weakness. For mine, it's the Stubborn Detective, which I think the flavor is great, so I'm very excited about that. First things first, we're going to get to the Guardian cards. These are you can do levels 0 to 5. Of course, when you just start, you can only do levels 0 in your opening deck, which gives it a bit of a harder time, especially for only one core set, but I feel like we're going to get the best out of this. We're going to have one copy of Guard Dog and one copy of Beat Cop. Uh, the 45 Automatic and the Machete. Once again, just very strong weapons to make sure that you can actually do things. And one copy of each means you'll have a harder time finding them in the deck. So I'm mauling for at least the machete, I think would be a good um, opening option, especially in a solo campaign. We have a first aid to uh, heal our damage with Roland isn't as important as healing his horror because he only has five hor uh, sanity at the start of the game, which is a low number. Uh, physical training is an asset I'm also going with to kind of, uh, there's a lot of brain tests that uh, can plague Roland that take away a deal horror damage. So we have dodge, which is great. If you're getting attacked, you can stop it. There is evidence, which is basically um, Roland Banks' ability, again. So you can pay once to just uh, use his ability twice in a turn, which could be good. Dynamite Blast, a card I've never played with. I'm excited to see how it goes, but it seems five, five resources. Choose either your location or connect location. Deal three damage to each enemy and to each investigator at the chosen location. So a lot of damage. You can really kill a big enemy that you need to kill. And especially, I feel like in the Midnight Mask, you take advantage of this to potentially nuke a threat when they're coming towards you and just deal with the problem as it comes. Last but not least, we got Vicious Blow, which is the skill test card that I'm using from the Guardian set. And our uh, Seeker cards, which are the yellow ones. We could do level 0 to 2. All right, so I have the Magnifying Glass as uh, one of the assets. It's just a fast, one-cost resource that makes you better at investigating, which is kind of key in a solo player game because um, Roland can get clues on his own, but having a Magnifying Glass will help make that a bit easier. I have Medical Text. I'm not too happy about this card being in the deck because it's essentially just another, in my opinion, worst copy of First Aid. However, I'm keeping it in here because I feel like it is more beneficial than the other cards in the Seeker class. I'm using it for the, the, the fist that it can commit to tests as just another way to potentially bring in more damage if I ever need it. However, this is a card that I am going to be upgrading out of the deck ASAP. I also have Hyper Awareness. It's the one that you can spend resources to increase your book or your feet. Uh, this is kind of a, a sister, brother-sister to physical training to make it so that you can, if needed, Upgrade those resources as you need them, add those stats as you need them at the cost of resources. Working a hunch, fast, play only during your turn, discover one clue at your location. I don't think this card is that great either, but I need it just to have it in the deck uh, to hit the 30 cards. And I feel like, once again, this one is just better for what I have available in the core set right now. Barricade, which I think actually, it commits three symbols. So it's very versatile. Um, and... Uh, it's, I think it's an ability that could actually potentially be beneficial, especially if there's a cover-up. If your cover-up's happening, you need to just hole yourself in somewhere and get some clues. You can kind of just protect yourself as the enemies come and then blast them all before you go. But once again, I still don't know the value of this card. It's kind of just in here to fill the deck out. Kind of same with deduction. If the skill test is successful, investing in a location, discover one additional clue at your location. This is not optimally how Roland Banks wants to discover clues, but it's in here just because I feel like it's good enough and it'll probably stay the cut, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the final deck at the end of the 
campaign. Now we're off to our neutral cards, and this one's kind of just a hodgepodge of stuff. So I have the, the in my opinion, the important cards. We have two emergency caches, uh, two unexpected courages. Those are cards that I feel like are a necessity to any deck. We have two knives, which are just good round of the good weapons that can do stabby stabby, and two flashlights, which I don't like that much, but I feel like they are good, good enough. I have two overpowers, just if I ever need to get over a big enemy and show them who's boss, as well as two guts, because once again, there's a lot of tests that require brains, and I want to be able to not take horror in the process. Finally, rounding out the deck is manual dexterity, two copies of it, with the intention of if I ever need feet, because my feet are pretty low, that's the one I want. So I'm about to do the gathering with this deck, and you guys can see it in action. And then uh, we'll do some upgrades and get ready for the next campaign. The gathering. All right. You and your partners have been investigating what partners? Strange events taking place in your home city of Arkham, Massachusetts. Over the past few weeks, several townspeople have mysteriously gone missing. Uh, recently, their corpse turned up in the woods, savaged and half-eaten. The police and newspapers have stated that wild animals are responsible. Do you believe there is something else going on? You gather together at the lead investigator's home to discuss the bizarre events. What's going on? It is late at night. You're holed up in your study, researching the bloody disappearances that have been plaguing the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlor down the hall. At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. Trapped! As you leap to investigate, um, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. Spooky. So, as you see, we have our study currently in play. You've been investigating the strange events occurring in Arkham for several days. The door to your study has vanished. There are two clues per investigators, and because it's just me, we're gonna go like this. Unexpected Curds, Machete, Cover Up, which is gonna get a go away, uh, Emergency Cash, and Dodge. All right, cool, so I'm kinda liking this. Let's see what replaces Cover Up. It's a deduction. Um, I think I'm actually going to just get rid of Unexpected Courage. I don't need that right now. It's replaced with a flashlight, which I'm actually okay with. We've also built the encounter deck, which we will draw from every turn and place the doom, yada, yada. You know how this goes. And I'm ready. I got three actions on my turn. So we're just going to start simple with uh, get this emergency cash to play this machete for free. And then with my last action, I'm going to play a flashlight. It is now the end of the turn, so I will draw a card and gain a resource. I drew an overpower, so that's going to be good for the later game. And then we advance Doom and draw a card of death. And we got ourselves Rotting Remains. Test Brain 3. For each point you fail by, take one horror. Here's that thing I was talking about. So we're currently going 3-3. Three to three. Hopefully we don't take too much horror, but let's see what happens. We got ourselves a minus four. If there's a ghoul enemy or location, take one damage and take one horror. So immediately off the bat, we're gonna take three horror. Here's that thing I was talking about, about in the deck tech, that Roland can kind of just fall apart and it's not too hot. All right, so we're gonna investigate here. I currently have, this flashlight has this. It's only two, three to two. So I am gonna use a flashlight just to get this down to three to one. Uh, it's a reveal another token. Oh, that's the hard and expert. I was doing this wrong. Minus two. So I actually take one less horror. I was on the wrong side. So a little bit better. Minus one. If you fail, take one horror. I don't. So I will gain one clue. And I will do that again and spend another thing for my flashlight. And once again, we're going three to one. Three to zero, actually. Minus X, so minus zero, I will get this clue. Finally, we will flip this. Whew! You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see a door leaning out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills a narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. And we are now in the hallway, which I'll reveal. Let me just get these all nice. There's the attic and cellar. And then here is the dreaded 
parlor. Objective, when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may as a group spend the requisite number of clues to advance. The hallway, one shroud, no clues. I have one action remaining. I believe I'm actually going to draw a card because I'm not ready to get anywhere and I want to see what else I can have with here. We drew an evidence, which is actually pretty dang good. All right, end of the round, draw a card, gain a resource. Our new card is Manual Dexterity, also something I'm very happy with because I'm getting ready for that Ghoul Priest to come, and I'm just thinking, how do I beat this Ghoul Priest? He's going he's gonna to mess my day up. Uh, and then we're going to tick up some Doom. New card is a Ravenous Ghoul, and he's going to spawn in my threat area. So, let's have this guy spawn. So this is one of those moments where I wish I could have had this guy show up in my... Uh, while well, I was in an attic or a cellar, and uh, he's pretty tough, so we're just gonna try to cut this guy up. We're gonna go five to three and see what happens. I have a minus one, so I will deal two damage to this, this idiot, and we'll repeat the process and go five to three, minus one. That's enough to kill this guy. I am going to move my way into the cellar. Uh, forced, after you enter the cellar, take one damage. Gladly, because that's the one I have a lot of health in. So we're going to end here. There's two clues there. So we'll place this on the card. It also has victory one. So I want to clear this place out. Because I'm a solo investigator, I want to take as take advantage of as much of the uh, XP I, ha I can get to make my deck better and better and better. All right, end of the turn. I will gain a resource and draw a card. There's no enemies in play, so we're gonna skip that phase. The card I drew is another manual dexterity. We advance the agenda, so let me just get that up. That's this one. Rise of the Ghouls. So on the back side, the lead investigator must decide, choose one. Either each investigator discards one card for a random from his or her hand, or the lead investigator takes two horror. As you can see, I'm already shuffling my deck up to discard one of my cards at random. And we're getting rid of this evidence. In this new one, it's just seven doom, so we're going to see how it goes. Our card for the turn is Ancient Evils. Uh, Ancient Evils, which is place one doom on the current agenda. This can cause it to advance. So at this point, that's not really a problem because I'm still here and nothing showed up. However, I'm at this little pickle with the cellar. And it's after you enter the cellar, huh? So I think we're going to draw a card for our first action. We drew a medical text, which I'm gonna to use to kill a creature. And then we're gonna use our flashlight to change this to two, and this deduction to change it our skill into a four, and we're gonna hope for the best. We got a skull, so that's minus zero, and I'm gonna spawn two clues at my, lo I'm gonna grab two clues at my location, because, uh, sorry, I did not change this, but I still have two clues. I made a mistake, um, because, yeah, this is the hard one, and I don't want that. For my last action, I'm going to move into the cellar, which will not trigger at the end of the round thing, but I'll gain a resource and draw a card. We drew Beat Cop, which I am very excited about. That's going to be incredibly helpful for what's coming up. We have a Doom Advancement on the agenda. Five turns left, assuming we don't draw anything bad. However, we're going to draw a Ghoul Minion. Okay, cool. So we're just going to attack this guy with our machete because it seems pretty fine. We're going to go five to two and see what happens. This guy doesn't have retaliate, so I'm not too worried about him. We got a minus two, so he's going to take two damage because he's the only enemy engaged with us, and that is going to kill him. All right, for our second action, we are going to actually take advantage of this guy and bring down this beat cop. For our last action, we're going to move into the attic, which is forced after you, enter the, after you enter the attic, take one horror. We're actually going to put that on Beat Cop instead of us, because he is a good brain shield for us. So those are my three actions, because I uh, moved in. I fought that guy, played Beat Cop, moved into the attic. We're going to draw a card and gain a resource. We got an emergency cash. Uh, Doom advances. That's another Doom on the agenda. Boom. Draw one card of the encounter deck. We got a Dissonant Voices, and that's okay because this turn I was hoping to just investigate. 
A note with Roland Banks is you always have to be worried about your cover-up because if you lose your cover, if, if you have no clues available and your cover-up happens, you kind of just have to take mental trauma. So in my mind, there's two ways you can go. You can pretend it's, you can pretend it's not in your deck or you can worry about it. And with this one, I'm just going to pretend it's not in my deck and just assume it's not going to show up. Of course, now that I said that, it is the top card of my deck. Fingers crossed that, does, that doesn't happen. We're going to investigate three to one here and see what shows up for our first action. We got a minus one. That's going to give us one of these clues, putting us up to three, which is enough to advance the mystery if needed. For my second action, whoop, put this back in. Go three to one again for the investigate. We got a plus one this time, so that's going to give us this clue. For our last action, we're going to move into this space. Okay. Uh, end of the round, we're going to draw a card, gain a resource. We got a barricade, which I actually think is... Uh, you know, doesn't really do too much, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll also advance the active mystery. I have four clues, but I only had three listed there, so I will keep one of them. And we will advance the agenda active mystery because you know i play a lot of eldritch horror uh using the barrel from the attic you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier the barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice then hisses and fades out of existence the barrier blocking the passage into the parlor has vanished reveal the parlor all right so reveal the parlor Zoop. It has an action to resign, and also you can also talk to Lita Chandler, which we're going to try to do. Lita Chandler shows up here. Uh, put the set aside Lita Chandler into play in the parlor and spawn the set aside Ghoul Priest in the hallway. This dissonant voice is gone, and I'm going to replace it with this very spooky, scary Ghoul Priest. Um, and uh, see what happens. So, our new thing is What Have You Done? Uh, a woman with a torch stands in your parlor, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. So, now we're going to put some of this. And we're going to get a frozen in fear in our play area, which is, in my opinion, kind of a problem. And then we can also just attack him. If we attack him twice and hit him. So we're going to see what happens, okay? So I have five. I'm going to go seven. I'm going to attack this guy seven to three. Seven to four, sorry. And we're going to go like this. We got a minus one on that. So I'm going to deal two damage to this guy. Because he is my only um, enemy engaged with me. So my Shetty's going to do that. Actually, I was eight. Sorry, I had eight because I have a plus one from my machete and my beat cop. And then this, I'll draw a card from that. We drew a hyper awareness, which I don't really need right now. So we're going to attack him again for our last action. We have five, six. I'm going to go seven with this medical text. And we're going to see what happens. So we're going to go seven to four. Ooh, we drew the evil one of death, which is how this game goes. So this guy has Retaliate, so he's going to deal 2 damage to me, and 2 horror to me. He's actually going to deal 1 to me, and then 1 to the Beat Cop. We're going to go like that. So we're going to test our... We're going to test our Frozen and Fear, and we're going to bump it up with this Barricade. So we're going to go 4 to 3, and see what comes out. Uh, minus two, so I will fail, and if there's a ghoul location at their enemy, which there is, I'll take one damage. So I will go to six. Six stamina. Okay. So that, that evil one that showed up, it's the enemy's turn, so I'm going to spend one resource and dodge his attack. So to cancel that attack. And then uh, I am going to draw a card and gain a resource. We got ourselves a guard dog this turn, so we'll see how that goes. This guy doesn't need done. Doesn't really do anything because I'll take an attack of opportunity to defend against it. But now I'm very interested to see what happens with this uh, the Omer, the evil deck this turn. We have another frozen in fear. I don't know if you can have more than one in your threat area at a time, 
So I'm just going to assume you can. All right, so we have one action this turn. So we're going to attack the Ghoul Priest. That's what we're going to do. Because we've kind of just bunkered down here and we're ready to fight this guy. So I have... Yeah, that's actually going to just... Boop, two frozen. I'm really frozen in fear. So I have one action. Unless I move... If I move fight or evade, it's one action. So we're going to uh, go four, five, six, seven. And see what this little guard dog does. We have a minus one. So that's six to four. That's going to deal two damage to this guy. My turn is now over. However... Uh, enemy phase begins. Enemies move. There's now a player window. I'm going to discard my beat cop to deal one damage to this ghoul priest, which is enough to kill him. Sorry, that's this one that I meant to put on. That'll be enough to kill him. Killing that ghoul priest, which was the objective. I also suppose I have to check my frozen fear, but I'll just do that for posterity's sake because I could take damage. Minus two, for this one I fail. And then the other one is minus one. So this one actually is also gone. This one actually stays as well. The Ghoul Priest, however, is dead. So we will flip the final agenda, which is, when the robed creature falls, the fiendish swarm burrows back into the ground and the chaos of the house quiets, but the strange in your parlor doesn't seem relieved. You broke my seal that was set to trap the ghouls within. She raises her torch. Now we must take more direct measures and burn this hell to the ground. So, I must decide between it was never much of a home, burn it down, or this hell pit is my home. No way we are burning it. Here's the choice. Here's the problem. So, I think I am going to burn the house down. I feel like Lita Chandler is a much better ally than she is saving the mental trauma. She gives you three attack. So she gives you plus one attack and more damage against monster enemies. She also costs zero, which is great. She has three stamina and three sanity, so she's essentially bumping up my skills by the amount that I would lose, lose from the mental trauma. I'm just gonna hope that I draw her. So let's finish up the resolution of this campaign with burning the house down in mine, which is R1. You nod and allow the red-haired woman to set the walls and floor of your house ablaze. The fire spreads quickly and you run out of the front door to avoid being caught in the inferno. From the sidewalk, you watch as everything you own is consumed by flames. Come with me, the woman says. You must be told of the threat that lurks below. Alone we are surely doomed, but together we can stop it. Note that my house has been burnt to the ground. I earn the Lita Chandler card. I also take one mental trauma uh, from watching my house become a smoldering ruin. And I get each investigator earns equal to victory X for each card in the victory display. Uh, so I have one, two, three, four... Each investigator earns two additional bonus, so I get six experience to work with to upgrade our deck. You can find how I'm going to upgrade this deck on the next video in the series for the Midnight Masks. Uh, so I'm going to upgrade the deck, play the scenario, and then see how it goes. Overall, I feel like my deck did fine. I'm very nervous, and I miss the consistency of having two core sets, but I feel there's still a hope and optimism for our good friend Roland Banks, especially now that Lita Chandler has uh, joined the ranks. Uh, if you like this video, consider subscribing, liking it, commenting, whatever. Um, there's going to be more of these seri uh, series in the future. And like I said, also be sure to check out the next video in the series as it comes up on our YouTube channel where I will go against the Midnight Masks as well as upgrades to this deck. Thanks for watching. GG's.